Hi, welcome, Simon here, and I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be doing a teardown on an Asus laptop. And let me turn it around and show you the model number. If you flip it around, you can see that it says TUF516P, and that is the model of this laptop. In this video, I'll be telling you or showing you how to upgrade maybe your M.2 drive, maybe the RAM, maybe change the battery or the CPU fan, things like that. So I'll try to do a complete teardown and walk you through step by step on how to do so. All right, so the first thing you need to have is a Phillips screwdriver and I'll be using the electric screwdriver here. For some reason, my bottom right screw is not coming out. So let me see. All right, we'll see what happened next. So the next step is to get yourself a plastic prying tool. We try to pry open the uh, back cover here. Okay, once the back cover is removed, you can see entire laptop um, what is showing here right, right in front of you. Okay, so let me kind of just walk you through what are the components. At least you get an idea what you're looking for. This is the laptop battery. And here is your M.2 drive. This drive here, which is the one that holds all your information, like your pictures, document, music, windows, everything is held in this m.2 drive this here is your wi-fi card that sends and receives the wi-fi as well as the bluetooth here is your cpu fan this is the copper heat sink for your cpu and the graphics card this is another exhaust fan the cpu fan here is your extra slots where you can install the upgrade of your ram and as well as the secondary m.2 drive and that's pretty much it is is it's just all that in the computer here now the next step is to remove the battery let me show you how to do so i just need to make sure that this leader uh, this little tape is not in my way. So first you need to push this metal clipper. And this metal clipper is securing the connector. You need to push it away from your body. So just push it that direction. And now you can lift up the connector just like a Lego. Just lift it straight up. Once you're done with that, let's go ahead and remove the screw.
Okay, once you have removed the screw, the entire battery will just come right out. And if your battery is not holding the charge, or if you see your battery is swollen, or if there's a lump to the battery, that means that you need a replacement. Now, where do you find the replacement model? If you take a closer look here, it says C4 1N1837. That would be the model for this battery. Let's put that on the side. Now, let's go ahead and remove the M.2 drive. And what you want to do is gently lift it up and slide it to your right. I know if it's going to feel a little bit sticky and hard to remove. The reason is because at the underneath here, you can see that the thermal pad, this thermal pad conducts the heat, bringing the heat from the chipset here onto the motherboard, right? So this little thermal pad is sticking onto the motherboard so you would have hard time sliding it out but do not put a lot of pressure just enough to gently and slide it off once you remove the screw now if you want to recover the information i recommend you to buy one of this this one here i got it from amazon is actually m.2 adapter reader so what it does is you can plug in your original um, m.2 drive into this adapter and then you can insert into any computer through a usb and you can recover your information by using this adapter okay and for those of you who thinks that the 512 gigabyte is too small and you try to upgrade it to like maybe one terabyte or two terabyte you can actually buy the adapter and do a cloning so you can clone everything over from the original to the larger m.2 drive i make a separate video on the cloning part i'll link them in the description below if you want interested to know how to do so go ahead and check it out all right so let's put that on the side now here is your additional slot for your ddr4 ram And here comes the DDR4 RAM. And if you want to increase from 8 gigabytes to 16, you just have to buy another 8 gigabytes of DDR4 and slide it in at 45 degree angle and push it down. And you can see that the two little side metal clipper would clip onto the RAM. That's how you install. Very simple and straightforward. To remove it, you just have to push that clipper on away from each other and you can just slide it out this is the secondary slot and if you want to add a d drive into it you just have to buy one of this m.2 slide it in and secure install into your motherboard again all the tools here and all the parts add-ons and the ram you can all get it from Amazon. I'll, I'll link them in the description below for you guys. Okay? You want the battery and so on and so forth. All right, let's go ahead and start removing the, uh, the motherboard. So here I have the tape. I'm just taping down onto the uh, wireless card. Let's go ahead and remove that screw. The white cable is on the left and the black is on the right. They are just like Lego, they snap one to it. You just lift it up and slide the Wi-Fi card out. Okay. Here is your speaker for the left or the right speaker runs along the cable underneath to this connector all you have to do is to slide the connector down and this connector holds on to the left and right speaker all together okay so keyboard you need to flip open the clipper and slide that flex cable down this is for your touchpad flip open the clipper slide it down this is for your keyboard led light open up the clipper and slide the flex cable down 
here comes the LCD screen connector. So make sure you have the tape open up. And now once the tape is open, you can gently slide the cable away from your body. So to that direction. All right, so now we're going to disconnect the CPU fan. So the, the connector is right here. All you have to do is to push that connector away from your body. The other one is hidden underneath. We're going to do all that in just a second. Now the next step I like to do is to remove the screw. There is one hidden screw right here. You need to remove the tape first. I just removed six screw, three three on each side of it, and I'm trying to lift the uh, the hinge up. So this is your LCD screen, the one the hinge that open and closes. So let's let's see if I can uh, lift it up a little bit. Okay, so I lift it up and push it up. You just have to flip the the hinge upwards. It's hard to get in. Once you get in, then and it's easier to just um, just lift it up okay once you open that up now we can get to the screw on the other side for your CPU fan Oh, sorry, do not forget this little tiny piece right here. You need to flip open that cable and then slide the flex cable out. That is probably for the, uh, the lighting on the keyboard or something else. I wonder why it is still attached to it. So let me, let me just remove all one big piece together. I'm trying to remove the CPU fan, all the heat sink one at a time but it seems like it's stick onto the stuck onto the motherboard where I have to remove the whole thing all together. So let's let's just do that. So what I did was I just removed the three screws and now I can remove the entire motherboard here. And let me see if there's anything holding on to the heat sink. It doesn't seem like anything is holding on to it. And maybe just the tape and all this tape right here, I might have to separate them maybe. 
Let me see. All right, so I know what is the reason why the thing is, is not coming out and I'll share that reason with you in just a second, but I need to disconnect this, this CPU fan connector right here. Okay, so the pretty much the, um, the thermal paste and the thermal pads, they are somewhat melted onto the uh the chipset so this is what makes them stick together and it feels sticky that is why the reason the heat sink is hard to come out and if you put enough slight pressure and gently work your way and pushing more and more to the pressure point and the heat sink would just separate away from the thermal pad or the thermal paste now this is a good reason why you want to come here and and use the alcohol wipes to wipe it down. Let me see if I have any here. So you can use like alcohol wipes and clean off the thermal pad on your CPU and the graphics card and you can use the uh, the thermal compound or thermal paste apply them onto the new one so that you can have a a better um, better heat conducting okay so let me go ahead and squeeze a little bit I'm not going to clean it off because they are still fresh and new since I have it removed I just like to squeeze a little here to keep my CPU and my graphics card you know moist and not overheating okay let's put that on the side now we have the motherboard removed and this is the entire motherboard if you're planning to um, so this is the eight gigabytes RAM so they do have the RAM pre-built onto the motherboard and this is the only slot where you can add additional RAM to it okay now let's talk about the keyboard is the keyboard replaceable? The answer is no, because the keyboard is built in all together. You see all these little punch down tools? The keyboard is punched down by the manufacturer. It is not something that you can um, replace the keyboard. In other words, you would have to replace the entire keyboard with the palm rest. So this is the whole built in keyboard. You would have to, if one of the keys is broken, you would have to replace the whole thing here with the touchpad and the palm rest. So the keyboard is built in one piece together like this. And this is your LCD screen. So I hope that the video is helpful. And if you have any question, comment below. And also, if you find the video is helpful, please give me a like and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye now.